Today in Gilgo Beach, a guardrail blocks cars from driving next to the thicket of Virginia weepers and bittersweet brush on the north side of Ocean Parkway. Some 12 years ago, though, Suffolk County police believe a killer drove his vehicle onto the parkway's then open grass shoulder. Probably in the dark of night, he got out and quickly dumped the body of a petite sex worker he had strangled and wrapped in a burlap bag. He dumped her body amidst the brush, poison ivy, and ticks in an area so unseeable and uninviting that no one noticed nine other bodies and body parts dumped in the area from 1996 to 2010. But it's not only the thick brush here at Gilgo Beach that's hampered the search for the Long Island serial killer or killers. It's also, many believe, past mistakes made by the Suffolk County Police Department, in particular, keeping the FBI out of the investigation for years. You know, frankly, the case was mismanaged uh, in a number of respects. And one of them undoubtedly relates to uh, blocking the FBI from assisting. In an interview with Newsday crime reporter Michael O'Keefe, Tim Seney said that in 2015, when he became Suffolk County Police Commissioner, the previous chief of police there, James Burke, had removed the FBI from the investigation of the Gilgo Beach serial killings. Later, an FBI investigation led to the conviction of Chief Burke for beating a robbery suspect in a police station and then covering it up. As police commissioner, Sini found official written evidence of his Suffolk County predecessors blocking FBI involvement. It was this memorandum uh, from a police detective basically saying, we arranged to deliver the homicide file to the FBI, FBI's Behavioral Science Unit to assist in the investigation. And in the last moment, the DA's office under Tom Spoda objected to us sharing that information and therefore we were forbidden to by the police department and we did not. Security consultant and attorney Manuel Gomez was an FBI agent on the Joint Terrorism Task Force after he worked as a New York City police officer. He notes the FBI entering at the beginning of an investigation is far more effective than coming years later into a cold case. The FBI has uh, its own evidence collection team, its own way of doing things. So now they're looking at the data that Suffolk County is providing to them. They don't even know if it's all the data. Who knows? So they're looking at pictures, they're looking at things like As opposed that. to the crime scene itself. As opposed to them being at the crime scene and doing things their way, which they have the resources, the training, and the capacity to do it at a different level. Plus, they have a much uh, more robust database. Yet Tim Sini notes there were worse problems in the Gilgo Beach serial killing investigation than the five-year FBI absence. But as an investigator and a prosecutor, uh, what was even more shocking to me, frankly, uh, was the lack of investigative work. Things early on were simply not done. And one of those things that is critical to any homicide investigation, particularly one involving so many victims, uh, is cell phone technology. Sini cites major resistance to potentially critical new technology he adopted later technology and software to gather and analyze 5 million bits of data from cell phone use to pinpoint where the killer made calls. Sini says this cost $300,000 and was a key part of his overhaul of the Suffolk County Police investigation of the Gilgo murders. But the cell phone analysis was conducted at least five years after the discovery of the first Gilgo Beach victim. Now some of this evidence was no longer in existence because of the passage of time. So that is a real concrete example of how missteps early on affected the investigation moving forward. At the time, you could basically pull your vehicle over to the side of the shoulder. Right here. And park here brief, briefly. Oh, and now you cannot stop. Stuart Cameron was Suffolk Chief of Police after James Burke. He met Newsday TV at Gilgo Beach. Contrary to Sini, he emphasizes that the pursuit of the Long Island serial killer was the most extensive investigation in the department's history. The searching went on uh, close to a year and a half, and there were multiple very large search operations and uh, involving a large amount of manpower, 
and we utilized resources from outside the police department. In December of 2010, Cameron was chief of patrol. One of his canine officers, John Malia, while searching for missing escort Shannon Gilbert, found another person's body. Cameron brought in fire trucks, dozens of police recruits, and used video surveillance to search for Gilbert. Within days, Suffolk police found three more bodies of what turned out to be petite, strangled sex workers wrapped in a burlap bag. But Cameron acknowledges not being allowed to work with the FBI while James Burke was chief hurt the search for this killer or killers. And I'm always a believer in collaboration, working with other police departments because you can learn things from them and you can share resources and, and share technology. So to exclude the FBI uh, from any case where they could be of assistance would be detrimental. In 2011, then Suffolk County Police Commissioner Richard Dormer declared, The facts of the, of the case indicate one person. But the then District Attorney Thomas Spoda publicly disagreed. I very, very much disagree with that theory. Did the public disputes locking the FBI's involvement and the frequent change in top leadership impact the investigation, especially in the first five years? You have the police commissioner and you have the DA publicly fighting about their theories on, on the case. Now, meanwhile, I know what's going on behind the scenes now. They weren't doing the important investigative work that needed to be done, at least with respect to involving all the different agencies, getting the, the, the relevant cell phone evidence, analyzing that cell phone evidence. There still remain more questions than answers as to who killed eight women, one man and a toddler, and dumped their bodies in the thicket in and near Gilgo Beach until September of 2010. And the killer or killers, if alive and not imprisoned, are still out there. Tiwa Chang for Newsday TV.